ground and still want to stay around. Right, let's uh, do a little bit more exploration. This time we'll take a picture that started really small. It's not only a small person here, <laughs> it's also a small picture. Uh, it goes back uh, to the times when uh, bandwidth was at a premium and I didn't do high resolution, or maybe that was considered high resolution. So the original picture is very low, uh, low resolution. And when I resample it, um, let's go and uh, do that. Of course, it will up right here. Uh, create the load the resampled one um, it's going to blur these uh, details the fine details on hair eyebrows the eyes and some of that we may want to try to uh, retain and if we ha if we use the super sampling you see it has a little bit the better chance of uh, sharpening that and keeping it a little bit crisper right if you look at one versus the other now sometimes it's too much and sometimes it's just not impossible from a tiny picture like that to really super sample it uh, especially if there is not much fine detail in the first place. The, the hair is uh, kind of all blurred out and overexposed, so you can't really expect it to find that much more detail to retain. So, but regardless of what it is, um, let's say we work with this one or with this one, we want to do a little bit of uh, edge detection or we want to do this contouring cell, right? So give it the pencil look uh, or the cartoon. So what we've just seen in another prior uh, tutorial is that we can, we can use the um, tools that are meant to reduce noise. Right, so if you do the noise, uh, there's a couple of filters that will add noise of different types, and then there's one here, the bilateral noise removal, that does just the opposite. And there's also the non-local noise removal. So the bilateral has, uh, both of these actually have the benefit or sort of beneficial side effect that they not only reduce noise, but also reduce colors, uh, and thereby giving it a little bit more of a cartoonish look. Uh, so if you, if you start the kernel size increase here you can look look at that the, the the skin here on the on the head and the ears and so on the more you go up there the less there is fine detail the, the, if you take it away you see a lot of little noise a lot of little fine details and then the moment you go up there it's blurring away but the major features are still there right? and that's pretty much a, a very cartoonish look and you can blur it to an extreme level here but you can also add as uh, we saw in the prior video you can also go to other ranges of frequencies and if you do that you'll you'll soon enough get something there very cartoonish looking with just a few color a few shades of the colors and uh, perhaps we'll go to number four so you can uh, you can see this working and and you know the the key thing is when you do a cartoon is to have the major feature still somewhat recognizable like for example you you have the head the hair over here is still kind of flattened uh, overexposed very bright right so you can tell it's not a red head or a, uh, a, a brunette she is blonde at least she was back then and uh, you see the smoothness uh, you can adjust maybe to the point where you barely see any details, no pimples, no freckles, no scratches, no nothing. But you might want to then also, let's, let's, uh, let's keep this one here, uh, you might want to, to store that and go back to the prior but only where the eyes are, right? So you may want to, to see a way to keep the eyes in their full original detail. And right now, if you look at the cartoon, it's this. If you look at the original, it's either this or this with a little bit of uh, crisper uh, super sampling. Maybe that's too much. Maybe we'll keep this one. I like this eye better. So one thing you can do is load one into a layer or load it into, uh, into the swap image. The swap buffer is a perfect place for that. So let's keep this one here, the cartoon style. Let's switch with S to the swap image, load the other one in there, switch back to the um, to the, uh, the main image, and you see here right in the title bar at the top, you see it's uh, the main image. When you use the S for swapping, it's, uh, it's swapping and main image, right? There's also another place you can swap between the two. It's... Uh, somewhere here, jump to the swap image with J, lowercase j. The other one copies to the swap image, right? So if you have if you have the keyboard focus, let's say you click here on the outside, so you have the keyboard focus in there, uh, J will jump between the two. 
And so let's say we want to actually blend through. You can paint it through. You can brush uh, in a mode which pulls it from the swap image. Right? So let's say you use the right click here for an airbrush, maybe a small or medium, and then adjust it a little bit. Normally you would paint like that. It gets the color you have in the main image, the main color, sorry. You may have, for example, a reddish color here and maybe something like this, right? And so you get some red colors. Instead now, what we want to do is paint the image through from the swap, from the other one, the other image back there, right? But just where we do this. So we'll change the size a little bit, um, and then we'll change the mode, right? There's a rub through, which rubs it. It's like you have a, a little lottery ticket and you scratch it. It's a lottery scratcher and you scratch it off and then it will reveal that you didn't win, right? <laughs> or that maybe you did win a dollar and you get your money back from buying the ticket. But what I'm saying is that you, you have this rub through mode and, um, oh, and it's not doing that with the with this brush. I guess I need a different type of brush. Um, maybe I need a custom brush or I need the other. Let's see, there's a couple of different types of brushes. Um, where is it? Settings. Let's pin this down so we can play with this a little bit. You can see there's a, a custom brush. Let's try that. Small custom brush. We actually see the preview here. Maybe even smaller is fine. And so we have it currently in paint mode. Let's go to, yeah, now we can select the brush. So the other one were built-in brushes. Um, those were not allowing that, but now that we have this, we can go and paint through. So let me zoom into that so you can see it's revealing the details from the image underneath it, right? Maybe that's too much. Let's go undo and undo. So here's the original image that we have in the tune. And now I'm just painting through revealing or rubbing through the picture on the other side. Same thing here. So these pixels are the ones that are coming from the swap image. And you can see that simply by switching back and forth and you see no difference here. These are really the pixels that came from the swap image. So you can do that in a couple of places, right? If you have some hair follicles you want to see over here, you can, you can add those too. You can simply reveal them coming from the swap image. So that's that's one thing to do. And of course, one thing that sometimes you'll want to do is actually have a composite where uh, part of the picture is one side and the other picture, the other half is from the other side. Or it might even be a, a, a line drawing, like this, the pencil sketch. Right, so let's do that. Let's, uh, let's store this image that we currently have, where we have the eyes showing with all their details. Uh, let's say we wanted to also do, go back, go back to this one here and uh, do some edge detection or maybe this which one is the one that is a little bit blurry there you go uh, let's do some edge detection here just a che cheap and easy way right i mean there's a couple of other ways to do it but let's do a color edge detect something like that and invert it uh, there it is and then perhaps uh, a little bit more contrast or threshold let's do it adjust the threshold so we see something like this. And so we see, see how we have these outlines around the face, the, the lips, the nose. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do that with the even better. I think this one is better if you do the adaptive threshold, right? So there, yeah, there, there it's not just looking across the entire image, but it's looking into small bits of pieces, right? There's a, a little bit of a, an adjustment you can make here, uh, the size of the, the tiles. And maybe if we keep them smaller, there you go. We get a little bit more refined control. And maybe we want to keep this area with the eyes and the nose. So let's keep that. Uh, maybe they're too big. Maybe it's uh, finer lines. And we could paint them or we could just say, well, maybe we can reduce this a little bit. Let's do the uh, photographic filter for light diffusion. So in light diffusion, you have the white pixels breaching over to the dark ones, right? So. Uh, that can easily be used uh, at times to remo remove some of the tiny little bits and pieces of pixels. But uh, also we, we just branch out into some of the, uh, the dark side and then we readjust it with the contrast or even just the threshold now because you, know, you can see how some of them reveals and some of them goes away. Right, so let's say we want to keep this and that goes into the swap and let's first store it and then we'll go to the swap image, put it in there, go back to the main image. Come on, 
Oh, I have him in both now. Okay, so this one here is the one we want. Are we in the main image? Yep. Let's go to the swap. There it is. Let's go back to why? Oh, there it is. I wasn't click wasn't clicking that button on the mouse uh, strong enough. So anyway, we now have both. We can, by the way, see them both. You see this little preview in the upper right corner of the the sidebar. If you click that, it blends them together in a way that you can control. So just like the layers, you can choose what type of blending mode you want. It could be like a round gray, something like that, or it could be screen mode and, and so on. So that's a way to blend not two layers, but the main and the swap image, the swap buffer, the main image buffer. They, they have a functionality that's similar and in parallel to what the layers can do. Uh, so what I'm looking at now is I can do this rub through just all over again, right? I can go back to the brush tool. I can still be in the rub through mode. And if I want to um, simply see what's coming through, the preview will actually show you. If you have the preview enabled here, right here, you don't see the preview. If I'm going over this area, I just see a little crosshair there, a little plus sign on the cursor position. But if I enable the preview, it's showing what the brush will do. And in this case, because of the brush mode being rubbed through, it's actually rubbing it through and showing you what is the image, what are the pixels that will be coming from the back, from the swap image. So if I draw it here, there it is. Right now, that may not be exactly the one we want because it's white background and black. Right? Maybe we need a multiply mode or something like that. Uh, so that's something that perhaps you can do with the layers. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can do this also with this. Uh, you know, you 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 will want to experiment with multiply mode. Uh, that's actually multiplying with the brush image here. So anyway, you you you'll see there's a, a couple of different ways to to uh, stack these together and combine them in the way you want. Uh, the rub through is useful, but it's not always exactly what you want because what it does is it really replaces. In fact, for instance, here for the eyes, right? You get you get to replace the pixels. Now, sometimes you do something like that, but only to a subtle uh, soft level. You simply do that by reducing not the size but up here the opacity. If you make the opacity very low you'll have to go through it a few times before it's really showing and uh, you can also reduce the step or increase the step distance so you really have to move a lot before it's starting to show and so that way you can kind of ghost it into it. Right? So yeah it's creepy but uh, hey it's Halloween what do you expect? <laughs> Alright thanks for watching we'll take you to another one. Uh,